Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 16, brought to you by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. We're back, Jeff Frick and I are pleased to be wrapping up day one for us, for theCUBE at uh, Knowledge 16, SA, uh, SAP, no, ServiceNow's big event, it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> Ferrier's texting me from SAP Sapphire. <laughs> and, uh, Looks like they had a good event down there as well. But, uh, but we're here at Knowledge 16. Great day. Um, financial analyst meeting yesterday, set up the Cube. Had a great uh, uh, kickoff uh, today at the, the keynotes with Frank Slootman and, and company laying out their vision. Uh, we just had Robert Gates on. Um, the guy's a rock star, right? I, was, I saw him at the CIO event. So ServiceNow has a separate CIO event within the event and they bring in a lot of speakers and they share, you know, it's behind closed doors, CIOs talking to other CIOs. Pretty impressive. It was great walking over with him, 10 minutes. He came on, now remember, he replaced Rumsfeld, right? Um, George W. Bush brought him in asking him to replace Rumsfeld. It was like, it would be like Belichick replacing Parcells, right? Rumsfeld, effusive, outgoing, controversial, right? And then, and then, and then, of course, Belichick, you know, very straight, narrow, and, and that's kind of the way Gates is, right? I mean, he was very measured and, and yet opinionated, yeah. right? Serving eight presidents, all of, all of which had great sense of humor, except two, he said. Right. Uh, Jimmy Carter and, and Richard Nixon. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dark days then. Take, take what you will from that, he <laughs> said. So pretty interesting, but so what's your take on day one at uh, Knowledge. Well, you know, kind of following up on some of the stuff that, that Dr. Gates talked about, it, it, the, the themes are actually really simple. You know, and he listed the traits of leadership. You know, these are not uh, things that you've never heard before. Caring, empathy, trust, humor. Um, and I think the themes here at, at ServiceNow are very similar, Dave, in that it's, it's about work. It's not about records. It's, you know, we've heard time and time again about, it's about effective response, not necessarily you know, building the, the biggest mode in the security, in the security aspect. And, you know, it's the action platform. We get work done. So it just seems like this kind of methodical, just boom, 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 sticking to their knitting, moving down the road, moving down the field, as we like to say, and continuing just to execute. And as they see everything as a, as a, um, a service, that now that opens up this huge opportunity to go well beyond ITSM, which is, you know, consistent with the vision. And I know we keep talking about that 2013, interview with Fred, but it was our first meeting with him, you know, to execute on that vision of a platform and now going into shared services, which we've heard a lot about, um, you know, a little bit into HR, a little bit into legal and continuing to move down that path where, um, you know, there just seems like a good opportunity for ahead, but they're just executing, just, just keep executing. Well, and, and ITOM now <clears throat> is the big opportunity facing them and I think is going to provide a mix shift um, to to a new set of products for service now. IT operations management, they've made some acquisi acquisitions. They are, uh, service management is now, it's got its tentacles everywhere. And I mean, essentially helping orchestrate chef and puppet if you want. They could do the orchestration for you. So cloud management is a new area for these guys. And this whole notion of interclouding and managing multiple disparate clouds is something that ServiceNow can help attack. I mean, it's take, pick a problem that involves a, a service workflow and ServiceNow is going to knock it down. How many things in business involve a service workflow? It's like everything. Everything we do, everything we touch has a service workflow aspect to it. Um, so every project, every new initiative, every acquisition, uh, it's just, you know, the market opportunity is enormous. And what ServiceNow has done a really good job of doing is taking this little notion of a, it's like the big bang, IT service management, you know, help desk, uh, change, manage, problem management, change management, et cetera, and exploded that in all different directions into new vectors. Like you mentioned a little bit in HR. I think it's increasingly getting traction in HR, uh, legal, uh, logistics. Uh, you're now seeing ServiceNow lay out a vision of touching and helping to essentially orchestrate requests, service requests around e the ERP systems, around the CRM systems, which are systems of record and relatively rigid systems of record. 
right? And ServiceNow can help orchestrate all the activities around that. It's enormous opportunity. So the TAM, I pegged the TAM in 2014. I wrote an article that uh, John Furrier republished on Forbes. I pegged the, the, the TAM at 30 billion at that time. And I remember when I went through the analysis, David Floyer helped me. I said, geez, you know, it just feels like it could even be higher. And I remember discussing that with David. He said, yeah, but 30 billion is so huge already. You know, you got this tiny little company and you're on thin ice. Well, you better be conservative here. And now it's up to 60 billion. I think the 60 billion is, is understated, Jeff. Well, Daryl from, from H&R Block in Canada, you know, they do this annual thing. I love how you called it a merger acquisition and a divestiture to build the infrastructure to execute the annual tax process for Canada. 84,000 tasks, everything from painting the building to signage, to computers, to paper, to hiring people, firing people. I mean, that is a lot of different tasks that they now manage with ServiceNow. I thought that was pretty, uh, a fascinating story. You were not when we had um, Lawrence on from, from, uh, from EY, not Ernst & Young anymore, EY, and talked about now they can provide a level of detail in, in the IT FM, the financial management, of like, what's the cost of an application that they, no one ever knew before because they never added in the data center cost. You know, it was just software and maintenance. And, and now people can start making uh, interesting and informed decisions about end of life and stuff, which has come up in a number of, of our conversations today that people are turning off other applications and, and uh, ServiceNow is taking that workload. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, we talked about this at the open, but when you and I walked the floor at uh, 20, the ServiceNow 2013, um, it, it was struck us that one of the challenges they had is to evolve this ecosystem. And, and that, by, by the way, they, they still have that challenge, but they've done a really good job. And you've seen, and one of the things we said is, where are the real big guys? Well, KPMG was here, but you know the, the Accentures of the world, the e e Ernie Youngs at the time, now they're going all in. So Accenture acquires Cloud Sherpas, CSC acquires fruition. <clears throat> so those guys like to focus on big opportunities. So the only area, now the other thing we talked about when we were at the ARIA was the down market opportunity. You know, we said, boy, wouldn't it be nice if they had a solution for small companies, take a pl you know, page out of the, the Salesforce playbook. And they've announced offerings there, but you're not hearing anything about them. You know, because, and I think the reason is, at least in part, there's so much opportunity in the Global 2000. They're really laser focused on, on that piece. Um, we got to do some more digging and find out what's going on there. I, I know initially there were some concerns about sort of the, the growth path, um, and, but we haven't heard a peep, unless I missed it, about the down market product, the entry level product. Right. Guys, the guys for, like us. Right, you know? we could use it. I don't know if I have 84,000 tasks to put the cube production together, but I got a few that I would love lot. to have yeah. automated in this system, absolutely. Yeah, so. And then the other thing, Dave, which, which uh, you know, we had Troy on talking about the design and, and the, the watch and the fact that he sits in a room. He's, he had a surf shop in the Maldives before he came to work for ServiceNow for a couple of years. And he sits with Fred. Um, <laughs> and so again, just this unique culture of having kind of the mad scientist you know, elder coder with the, the, the fellow surf shop design guy and, and to come together and to try things and to come up with the watch. And he told the story of the watch and how he had to build credibility over years to try new things to get to the point where he could say, hey, let's, let's talk about the watch, let's do a watch. And what is the form factor of the watch? And what are the types of notifications and work behavior that we can better represent, represent in this form factor? Um, and I think, you know, it's just, you just cannot underestimate the strength of having you know, a driven visionary leader that pulls people to him and inspires people, which he so clearly does. Well, and he's young at heart. I mean, it's like I was saying, I think he was coding in the keynotes today. <laughs> I got, we got to ask him when he comes on. You know, but they, you know, you look at this company and there's some folks at this company that have been around for a while. You know, it's not a bunch of kids, you know, coding them, there are. Right. But a lot of the senior leadership team and the, te the technical team, the development team, have you know, been around the block. Right? This is not their first rodeo. Um, and yet, they're able to focus on simplicity. You know, Fred used to talk about the Amazon experience la you know, last year. I think it was the Uber I experience. Uh, I, think we're, I know we're going to see some more stuff on, on Wednesday. The, the watch 
Still has me scratching my head a little bit, but, uh, but, but it looked but, cool. But when did the Apple Watch come out, right? I mean, when did, yeah. if, if you look at Apple's kind of the people that stamp, you know, this is now kind of a valid new technology. So was it was last year, right? Yeah, last year, and they're already and kind of thinking of new ways to use this form factor. That's good, right. Well, it's uh, one of the guests said today, um, you know, things change so quickly now. You know, we, it's true, we used to go to these conferences and you'd be talking about the same cloud narrative two years straight, right? Right. Now it's like every six months it's something new. Every three months it's something new. You know, whether it's, you know, the way IoT just exploded on the scene, you know, Hadoop, which was so hot, now Hadoop's like passe. You know, everybody's talking about, you know, Spark and, you know, other new real-time methods and streaming and, and it's just amazing to see the pace of innovation and so ServiceNow seems to be a company that can keep up with that. The other thing is, I look at my notes, I'm, is back to your comment about the system integrators, you know, we had Accenture and CSC both talking about them getting out of the plumbing business um, and really moving more of their efforts with their clients to the high value stuff. And you think, wow, that's kind of counterproductive. They've made a lot of money on, on doing heavy lifting infrastructure implementations and integration and all that big nasty stuff. Even they see the writing on the wall and it's better to get behind this transformation, uh, it's called the rotation to the new, and to build their practice around helping their customers execute in a cloud-enabled world versus necessarily continuing to, to stitch together infrastructure. Well, I mean, I think that's, it's important. I mean, the hallmark of a great company is one that can, can navigate through transitions. We've, we've covered EMC for years. We've seen their, their executive, Joe Tucci, talk about the waves. Um, I, I always believed in, uh, that EMC strategy, for example, was, was the right one, but it could not navigate those waves, right? There's been a lot of great companies the digitals, the primes, the wangs, you know, and so we'll see if, well, I mean, guys like the service companies tend to be able to make those transitions, right? Because they, they do, you know, eat from the trough, so to speak, right? Right. They, they wait until there's a lot of food and then they go in and, and pig out and well, they do a really good job of it. And they're doing it now, so that tells you there's food. So that's a huge sign, uh, a confirmation uh, about this ecosystem. So, all right, anyway, uh, big, another big day tomorrow. Start off with the keynotes at uh, 8 a.m. Pacific time. And, uh, and then we start up, I think, at 9.30 again, right? Correct, we start at 9.30. And again, we've got a great uh, selection of, of uh, ServiceNow executives, of course. Um, but more importantly, what we look forward to really is the customers. And, and again, as, as we've said a number of times, one of the reasons why this is one of our favorite shows is because we get to talk to practitioners. We get to talk to people that are executing, that are in the trenches, that are transforming their own companies in this competitive world, and they happen to be using ServiceNow as part of that strategy. And there's a lot of them here, so we will be uh, extracting the signal from the noise uh, as we do at theCUBE. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. This is a wrap, day one. We're here at ServiceNow Knowledge 2016 at the Mandalay Bay. We'll see you tomorrow. Service management.